Don't call me a hipster. I'm really not. I just love vinyl records. There's something about the scratches and the pops and the ambient fuzz that makes me feel a stronger connection to the music. My mother got me a Crosley turntable for Christmas four years ago, and ever since, my love for dusty old records has grown wild. I pick up new records at Goodwill. I go out on record store day and buy them by the dozen. Sometimes, as is true of this story, I find a jackpot at garage sales. The weather is warming up and garage sale season is in full swing, but when I took home a milk crate full of old jazz and blues LPs, I never expected sheer terror to come of it. I handpicked them all, Miles Davis, Sonny Rollins, and Art Tatum, and as I thumbed through the warped, old sleeves, I found one that I didn't remember buying. The sleeve was black with no title or artist's name. Water damaged head caused it to get that splotchy, malted look that old cardboard gets. I slid the record out of the sleeve and found the vinyl itself in similarly poor condition. Dust was caked on its black face and the grooves were worn deep. The sticker at the centre of the record was scratched away, revealing no more clues to identify it. It was nearing bedtime, so I figured I would slap it on the turntable and give it a spin before I hit the sack. I pulled the arm until I heard the click and the old record began to spin. When I dropped the needle on the outer rim, I was greeted by the nostalgia-inducing static that I had grown so fond of. I expected more jazz, but what came out of the speakers was pure chaos. A garbled hiss was lost in heavy static, and a sudden, shrill screech made my ears ring. Somewhere in the cacophony, I could make out the sound of voices. The voice in the foreground sounded distant and muffled. I leaned close to the speaker to decipher the words, but it was as if the singer were speaking gibberish. The words were at once familiar, but completely alien. The hairs on my forearm stood. Goosebumps ran up and down my skin. I lifted the needle abruptly off the record and turned the turntable off. Whatever I had just listened to was clearly not the original. Excessive wearing and warping of the vinyl must have turned whatever music there was into a murky mess of noise and jumbled syllables. I shrugged and settled into bed. That god awful noise had given me an instant headache and I needed to lie down. I'm the kind of person that can only fall asleep if I'm surrounded by complete darkness and silence. I allow no music or television in my room once I'm under the covers. So imagine how startled I was when, two hours later, I was awoken by the sound of the turntable switching on. Somehow the needle had fallen onto the spinning vinyl and I lay in the dark, listening to the fuzz that surrounded the start of the record. I tried to sit up, but I found myself unable to command my limbs. Was this sleep paralysis? I tried to wiggle my toes, but the effort was futile. I lay there, glued in place, staring at the glowing red power lights of the record player out of the corner of my eye. This time, however, the jumbled mess of noise and gibberish did not play off the mysterious record. Instead, a single voice, loud and clear as water, came pouring out of the speakers. It was a male's voice, and he wasn't singing. No, he was just speaking, calmly, casually, with an air of irreverence. I don't know why I do it, the voice said. I mean, don't get me wrong, I want to do it. I love it. I certainly don't try to stop myself. I lay there, breathing, unable to budge a single muscle in my body. In the silence between the speaker's slow pace, I found myself 
staring into the dark, accompanied only by the dull fuzz of the hissing vinyl. Well, there was one time, the voice said, that I didn't mean to do it. My mom. That was an act of uncontrolled passion. No, no, no. I didn't wake up wanting to kill her, kill her, kill her. It was a combination of adrenaline and convenience. I had the knife. She had that paper-thin skin. It was an equation so simple. I couldn't leave it unsolved. Was I dreaming this? It was the only explanation. As the speaker went on, I heard the click of the speed controller send the record spinning from 33 RPMs to 45 RPMs, and then again to 75. As the record spun faster, the speaker's voice grew high-pitched and the words spewed out of him at supersonic speed. Now after that was Nancy, my girlfriend at the time, and that one I knew full well what I was doing. God, the blood was everywhere. 32 stabs to the head. The blood was all matted in her hair like a mop head full of cranberry juice. The speed controller clicked back to 45 RPMs. Sheila, I met her at a music festival. At first, I just planned to screw her. I didn't know. Back down to 33 RPMs. At the time that I was going to drag her by the hair out of the woods and bash her skull with a rock. That one was a surprise, even to me. Not that I didn't enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it. The record was skipping again. Then the speed controller switched up to 45 RPMs. The speaker began to laugh. It was a deep, throaty laugh that seemed to go on so long that I didn't know whether the vinyl was skipping or the man was savouring the chuckle. I was trembling uncontrollably. What twisted psychopath had recorded this? Why was it tucked into the milk crate that I picked up at the garage sale? Should I call the police? How am I going to call 911 when I can't even get out of bed? Now you. Yeah, you. I've been planning yours for a while. The speaker was talking to someone else who had remained silent through the whole tirade. I've been watching your house for weeks. That back window you always leave unlocked. You just really put a nail in it. Even if you lock it, a screwdriver will do the trick. The record sped up to 45 RPMs. And then I'll have a screwdriver in my hand. Nasty way to go. The air in the room became inextricably chilled. I shivered. Despite the heavy comforter I was trapped under, my fingertips were tingling. Funny thing is, funny thing is, funny thing is. The speed slowed again, just as the record began to skip. You don't even realize I'm talking to you. You know how easy it is to follow someone home, home, home. The words he spoke next terrified me so thoroughly that... I jolted out of my paralysis and flailed my way off the mattress, clawing the blankets off my body. You know how easy it is to follow someone home from a garage sale? The turntable clicked and the record stopped spinning as the record came to an end. <laughs>